Michael, can you tell us a bit about what's happening next week? So on Wednesday, um, September 30th, at from 12 to 1, we're having a celebration of recovery, basically. Um, it's, it's, it's a virtual event, but we, us at Connect Recovery are, are hosting and putting it on. We are having a couple of very good, powerful speakers. Um, Matt Ganim, who is a friend of mine, and he is a, he is a poet. And he actually has a published book of poetry. Um, he works in the, in the treatment community, and he's, he's an advocate in, in the treatment community. Um, his poetry is around recovery and, and, you know, the pain involved and, and actively using and then all sorts of, all sorts of um, things. Um, but he will be speaking. He'll be saying a poem, telling a little bit of his story. And we'll also be having George Carroll, who is also known as Slane. And he is a rapper and an actor. Um, who also is in long-term recovery and and has has a great message. Um, we we have an amazing MC for the for the event in who do you Dr. have? Joseph, Dr. Joseph Strand. Oh, thank you. Um, and we'll also be hearing from a a current Connect Recovery client who will be telling a little bit of, of her story. Um, and my and client that, Shawnee, with a great mm -hmm. story. You'll, you'll love her. Mm -hmm. So, so how do people uh, get involved in this? How do they tune in? So, the, again, it's virtual. It's going to be a Zoom event, and the link is on the Riverside Community Care website, as well as the Riverside Facebook page. Um, you do have to, to register for the events. It just takes one minute. It's just going to ask you for your name, um, email address, and, and for your name. You don't have to put your full name. We don't need your last name. Just all the boxes have to be filled. Um, so you have to register for the events and, and then join us uh, September 30th. But like I said, the Riverside website and the Facebook page. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll post that also on the Dr. Joe Show Facebook page. And I think WATD uh, has been very kind and they're gonna be promoting it and doing some uh, public service announcements about it as well. But for our listening audience, I really hope you can be part of this and participate because the more Can I just people... interject one second. Oh, go ahead, Carol. Go on. I've um and also if they put their initials in, they don't have to turn their camera on or anything. But along with the show, there'll be a running list of names of people um who have lost someone to opioid use or addiction. And they can they're gonna write their names in the chat box. We'll have a moment of silence for them mm -hmm. at one point. So it's also to honor the the people that didn't make it. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm so glad that, that you remind us of that, Carol, because when we do drug story theater um, and we are in an audience of, you know, six, seven, eight hundred, six to seventh graders or wow. high school kids, we'll, we'll ask them at some point, how many people have lost someone or know of someone who has lost someone uh, to the opioid crisis? And mm -hmm even if one hand goes up, but there's never just one. So many hands go up, it is chilling. It is chilling. And then we also have a moment of silence. Really? And imagine an auditorium full of sixth grade students oh. who can be quiet and they stay silent. And then I say, and I'm gonna say this on Wednesday, that is the silence that these families experience. The silence of a voice they will never hear again. Yeah. And this is why we are here to prevent that next opioid crisis, to mm. prevent that next overdose. And we cannot do it alone. We are all in this together. Addiction is not about morality, it's about mortality. But we as human beings, can remind each other of our value, remind each other that we have value. And, and that, that is so important because it then stimulates in your brain another part, the, the oxytocin response, not the oxycontin response, oxytocin, that neurohormone of trust, that feeling you get when somebody says you're amazing. 
And how many people give that away when they're using drugs and alcohol? And that's one of the things that we teach. You can get high, but based on the brain science, the price you pay is trust. And you just have to decide which pleasure is more important to you. Being trusted or not. And that's why when people are in recovery, contribute to society to help with your sobriety. Help other people. And that increases your value so much, you just feel better. It's a better high than drugs or it alcohol. Is. It really is. So how do people actually sign up for it? They go to the website, the connect to recovery portion or through Riverside Community Care. And then- The event, um, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's on the Riverside Community Care Facebook page. And then if you go to the Riverside Community Care um, website, there's, there is a Connect Recovery section. And if you click on there, it, it's got the event posted there. It'd be great. And, and, and people really, come and sign up, show your support. Um, you know that you know somebody who needs this. You know that you need somebody that you can support. You know that there are people in the community. So by coming to Riverside Community Care, by coming to Connect to Recovery, you are becoming part of this really important movement. Mm -hmm. This important movement where we remove the stigma. Mm -hmm. We remove the stigma because people don't come into treatment because they are afraid they will be judged as less than and broken. This is what the I am is all about. Mm -hmm. No one's broken. No. no one's doing any less than their best. But if you don't like it, you can change it. And that's what it's about. It's not about treatment. Treatment implies there's something broken. Mm -hmm. But if you don't like something, you can change, you adapt, you evolve. That's part of who we are as human beings. And it is a powerful thing. And I am personally so honored to be part of Riverside Community Care because the mission is all about that. It's all about reminding someone of their value. That's what it we is. all want. We just want to be feeling valuable. So is that part of your experience as well? Do you guys get that sense that you are valued while you're doing this work? Oh my God, amazingly valued. Amazingly valued. And, and your self-esteem also goes up. I have people, because you, get, you gain self-esteem by doing esteemable things. Right. So anybody I work with, I've had several clients who want to get into the field. I say, Carol, I've been sober for a while. This is great. I mean, and like you were talking about, talk about a movement. It's such a huge movement against people with the drugs, you know, taking their lives, all the kids. When you walk over so many bodies after years, you just, can we help this at all? But I think like what you were talking about, everyone together, you know, can accomplish this fearlessness attitude that yes, it can be done, you know, together. Um, and when you talked, I mean, just to, just to go back for one second, when you said to me, all of those children silent as the grave um, and thinking about when, you know, when you're that age, you're sad, your dog died usually, mm -hmm. that you've lost many, many friends to opiates, you know, and so it's just, you know, it's just amazing that these kids have to even know about this. But I think that the more of them that are educated about it um, and tell their friends about it and um, they can support each other. Yes. Not go there, you know. That's right. And, and we talk about that with Drug Story Theater you know, there's peer pressure. Peer pressure doesn't have to be negative. Nice. You can have positive peer pressure. You know, we know that one of the great risk factors for first time substance use is low self-esteem. But at every and any moment in time, you can remind someone of their value. And whenever you remind someone of their value, you increase your own value. So with Drug Street Theater, we'll have these six, seven, 800 kids in the auditorium and during the talk back after the show, I'll say, okay, so let's just try this. Who's ever sitting closest to you, just say something nice about them. 
And within seconds, the room explodes in laughter and smiling and people saying these things. And, it, and it's just so wonderful and powerful. And then we calm everybody down and we say, is there anyone in this room that's not smiling right now? And everyone's smiling. And we say, Amazing. that's how easy it is to remind someone of their value. And when you're doing that, you're increasing oxytocin in their brains and you are actually helping to protect them against that first time substance use, which puts them at risk for a lifelong addiction. Stretch the cat!